What's going on, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market did it again, guys. S&P 500 up 70 points, up 2%. The Dow Jones also went up 2%, up 540 points. And the NASDAQ 100 up over 300 points, up 2.5% as the Russell 2000 beat them all, up almost 3% up 45 points on the day. So in this video, we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over a bunch of stocks that I'm looking to buy right now in the stock market. And I also want to go over what I'm doing, my thoughts on the markets in general. And we're also going to break down the election and see kind of what's going on there as of now. So if you guys find value, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the Strive Smart Discord chat, Facebook, group and if you guys want three free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600 with a deposit of $100, all of those are linked right down below. And did I mention all of those are literally free? So yeah, go check them out down below. And without further ado, guys, let's get right into it. And it was another killer day in the markets today. This was what, the third day? fourth day of gapping up. It was the what? One, two, three. It was the fourth day of gapping up. You guys can see ever since we hit 3230 on the S&P, it's been gap up after gap up after gap up. We gapped up to about 3300 the day after that low, back up to 3380 the day after that. The day after that, we gapped up to about 3470. And today we gapped up very, very closely to that high from back in October, the middle of October, right? Take a look. S&P, was this a double top? It kind of looks like it. Yeah, we double topped here at about 34 or 35, rather 30, right around that general area. And again, that is roughly where we were back in the middle of October. And if we pull back a bit further, the high from September, let's take a look where that was. That was back at 35 88. So we're getting very close to all time highs here, guys. And that goes to show how quick things can turn here in the markets, right? And we talked about this. We talked about this, right? We said if the S&P 500 was able to hold those lows back in September, remember the market sold off in September. We talked about how if we hold that point, we rally out. Well, we actually did hold it uh, a couple days ago, right? Back in the end of October. We said if we hold that point and we start to rally to the resistance of this wedge that, that you guys can see here, it's likely that we're going to see some green. And especially if we break out of the resistance of this wedge and the moving averages on the four hour chart. And we did exactly that. And what you guys notice is we've seen explosive momentum ever since the S&P did break out of these levels. And with yesterday's price action and today, we actually got above another big resistance, right? We got above 3460, which I talked about yesterday. Now, again, like I said earlier, this video, literally a minute ago, we're going to be going up potentially the next resistance here at that high from the middle of October. So watch 3550 generally on the S&P. If that breaks, we're going to be gunning for all-time highs. And how does that relate here to the SPY, which is uh, the SPY ETF that tracks the S&P? Very simple. You guys can see it here. We broke out of this wedge. We broke moving averages, both of them on the four hour chart. That's very bullish. And we also took out big resistance level at 345. Another big one was, was at around 350. We easily broke that and now we're holding above it. So I'd look for 350 to hold. If that doesn't, we might see some retracement to 345, which would honestly be healthy here, guys, because we saw four straight days of gapping up, like I mentioned. So if SPY pulls down, 345 is my target, but let's say we blow right through 350, we hold it no problem, which again, we're holding it right now. The next target could be 354, roughly. That is the high from back in the middle of October. So watch what it does here from 345 to 355 ish, that 10 point window. We could go either way at this point, but honestly, I would like to see it pull down. That's just me being honest because, again, we've seen four straight days of gapping up. Our size overbought at this point, so 
I'd see a healthy pull down being again around 345. So markets are crushing it, guys. Unbelievable here. And when we take a look at the Dow Jones, Dow Jones up over 500 points today. We ended up breaking out of 28,300, 200. That was a big resistance. We held it as a support. That is very good news for the bulls, right? And now the next gap looking to fill on the Dow Jones, very simple. You guys can see it here on the four hour chart is right around 29,000. That's about 600, 700 points away from where we are now. And that would actually be putting the Dow Jones at a high that we haven't been at in a long time. Months, right? Months. And believe it or not, guys, the Dow Jones has not hit an all-time high yet um, during this resurgence after the initial crash. It's out, it's out of the main indexes, the only one that has it, not including the Russell, because I don't think the Russell hit an all-time high either. So watch out for 29,000 on the upside here, Dow Jones. Let's take a look at the Russell. It didn't. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, the Russell, wow, it hasn't hit an all-time high since back in the beginning or end, kind of the end of 2018, right before they tried to hike the interest rates. And when they did that, we saw that that flush in 2018 and the Russell took a massive hit there. Wow. It dove down almost 500 points. So we haven't hit an all time high in the Russell here or the Dow in quite some time. So I'll be watching for those two indexes here, not saying they're going to outperform, but I'm just keeping a close eye on both of them, especially the Russell, since a lot of people like to call it the heart and soul, right? Small businesses are the heart and soul of the USA. So watch out for the Russell to see how small mid cap uh, businesses are doing, right? And when it comes down to the NASDAQ 100, let's pop this up really quickly. The NDX here, pull up this 20 day chart. Let's see what's happening. So we broke out of 11,500 yesterday. We talked about that. Now with today's gap up, we broke out of another big level right around 11,700, 800, right around that resistance of this wedge that we were also talking about yesterday. And remember I said yesterday, guys, that we closed under the wedge and take a look, we gapped right out of it. That is very, very bullish. Now the next spot here is 12,000. 12,100. That's a big resistance. We closed under that today. So if we take that out, I would not be surprised if we start gunning for all time highs here on NASDAQ 100, which is right around 12,400. But like I said, on the S&P, it applies to the markets in general. We need a little pull down. I would not be surprised if we saw a bit of a cool off, bring that RSI down a bit to a more healthy spot. And hey, maybe the NASDAQ comes back down to 11,800. It fills that gap down and then maybe rallies back out from there. I think that would be healthier than just, you know, simply gapping up from where we are right now, if that makes any sense, right? So that's kind of the market doing very well. Bulls are in charge. I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. And you guys know I'm not a political dude. I don't talk about politics here on the channel, but since it is the election, I mean, this is the only exception. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. And I don't think anything has really changed um, from yesterday. So we don't really have to go over much. But Biden, Trump is obviously the two candidates, right? And this is the election map here on Google. And we have Biden six points shy of that 270, which is needed to win. So that literally means if he gets Nevada, he gets six electoral votes and he wins. It's over. That like just like that, right? If he gets Nevada. But if Trump somehow comes back here, he gets Georgia, he gets North Carolina, he gets PA. Those votes will add up to what? Let's do some math. 15 plus 16 is 31 plus 20. That is 51. And if he somehow gets Nevada as well, 51 plus 6, that's 57. That would put Trump over that 270 points. So Trump would end up winning. And now we're seeing he's suing, uh, I think, Pennsylvania for a recount. I think, uh, what was it, Minnesota as well. And now he wants a recount, and I believe Arizona as well. So we'll see what goes down. I mean, we talked about yesterday how we might not see a winner for a week, a couple days. We might see one later today, maybe tomorrow, Friday, after uh, I believe Pennsylvania gets done counting their votes. So we just have to wait it out. And at this point, I'm not a statistician either, guys. I'm not some math wizard, but 
I would say the odds are on Biden's side, right? He's more likely to win because he only has to win one state, which he's already leading, which is Nevada, and he's up about 12,000 votes right now, according to Google. So that's all he has to do to win. And Trump has to win literally all of these states remaining. He has to maybe somehow get Arizona if they get recounted. I'm not sure what if that's going to happen or Michigan. Who knows? He needs a lot more. Let's put it this way. Trump needs a lot more on his side to win than Biden does. So, and I'm sure you guys will agree because it's pretty obvious if you're looking at the election map. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys. I would love to know. And again, I'm not a political channel, but due to the time period we're in, we have to talk about this as this will affect the market. And it seems like, guys, the market Like I said before, a couple days ago, before the election, the market could go either way. A lot of people thought, you know, oh, Biden's going to get elected. Markets are going to crash. Trump's going to get elected. Markets will go up. And what did I mention? I said, guys, the market could do anything. And it seems like now that the market is getting comfortable with the idea that Biden is going to win, it's going up regardless, which is what people thought wouldn't happen before the election, right? Which again, again, goes to show the market does whatever it wants, which is why being all cash, like I said, is risky because you can miss up moves like this. And sure, I love cash. I'm an advocate of cash, but having skin in the game as well with having cash, in my opinion, is the best way to go. So let me know your thoughts down below on the markets, the election, what I just said, everything going on. I would love to know. And if you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit that like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, make sure to also subscribe to the channel. So let's talk about what I personally did. So I actually added a position today in SLV, which we talked about before. I mentioned to you guys SLV and gold, the precious metals market, I'm a fan of, right? I've been for a while now. And recently, as they've been beaten down, right, been beaten down a ton, uh, you guys can see SLV, GLD, silver, gold. I mean, they've been selling off, but what we see, they've been selling off into this wedge, right? And we've been squeezing deeper and deeper into the wedge, and we finally broke out. We picked the the side, the direction that we want to go, which in this case is up, right? You know, silver ended up going up a dollar. 55 announced today, up almost 7%, 6.5% as of now, which is unbelievable. Gold ended up going up, let's see here, 2.8%. And what you guys notice is silver is more volatile than gold, which is why it usually does better than gold on green days, and it does worse than gold on red days, right? That's kind of what that means. So we saw the massive pop in gold, silver, and in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's over $15,000 now, which is a, a topic for another video. Let me know if you guys want an update to my crypto portfolio. On a side tangent, back in May, I actually bought some Bitcoin the, for the first time since 2016-17. I bought back in at about 9900 I bought like $600 worth, a very small amount, just to get some uh, more exposure to it. And now, again, with with it being 15000 plus, uh, uh, let's just say I'm up a good amount on that position. So if you guys want me to make an update video on Bitcoin, let me know down below in the comments. And again, back to silver here. I ended up adding to SLV, which is simply an ETF that tracks the price of silver, right? That's simply what it is. And I ended up adding here at $23.20 on initial position, more towards the beginning of the market today. It was actually right when we broke out of this pre-market resistance. I put a limit order at 23.20, we touched it, and then I ended up getting filled right there. So yeah, I'm in SLV with a, I don't want to say a really small position. I kind of went a bit heavier at first um, with this position here, but I plan on continuing to add even if it pulls down under my cost basis. The only place that I'd probably get out of it is if it were to break, I think my stop right now is at 22 bucks. So if it broke 22, I'd probably get out. But in my opinion right now, with the dollar weakening, the dollar index was down today about, last time I checked, 0.75%. I mean, dollar's weakening. We're getting a stimulus package soon, probably in the first quarter of 2021. 
That's going to devalue the dollar, and I think silver, gold, Bitcoin, they're all going to do well, which is why I have them in my portfolio, and this is not financial advice, but I think they do belong in most people's portfolio. So I'm in SLV right now, plan on adding more to it. I'm very, very happy with this one, and I'm also still in Apple. You guys know that, AAPL, Apple crushed it today, back over 119 bucks, and I'm actually up a pretty decent amount now on Apple. I ended up adding initially at 115, was down a little bit, added more at 109.50, brought that average cost down. And that just goes to show, guys, patience is key when it comes to swing trading, especially and having those targets where you want to add more. I wanted to add more at 110. I did it. I wanted to add more at 105. It didn't get that low, so I didn't do it. But it doesn't matter. It's all about having those targets and where you want to buy more at and where you want to sell. And for me, I'm actually not really looking to sell Apple because I think we might be able to get out of this wedge. We might break out of what we're seeing here, do something like this, and I might even add more into that strength, into that momentum, as I think Apple could get back to the mid-120s, maybe back to 130. Probably not in the next week, two weeks, but like I've said before, this is a long-term swing trade for me, and if we do end up breaking out... I might even take a little profit, let some ride, maybe add more. We just have to see what ends up happening here, how it ends up playing out. And EA, guys, I'm getting crushed on EA right now. After hours, it is not looking too pretty. Their reported earnings, might as well just talk about that very quickly. I'm in EA at about $133-ish, and EPS came in at 63 cents, which is actually down from about 97 cents last year. So their EPS is shrinking. Sales came in at 1.15 billion versus 971 million. That was the estimate. So sales did beat, but the EPS is down and that's not that's not too strong here. And I mean, like I say guys, I'm not the biggest guy on holding through earnings, but in this situation I did. And like I say, it depends on your time frame. If you're short-term swing trading, trying to gamble on earnings overnight, that's something I don't like to do. But if you have a long-term time frame on your position, in this case, I plan on holding it for four to five, six months, which is the was the plan from the get-go. I, I would hold through earnings. I mean, that is kind of how I do it. But in this case, it's uh, it's going down, right? We're down about $9 after hours. I'm down on my position, but with the time frame that I have, I'm still okay because there's time for me to ride out the volatility, if that makes any sense. And I'd add even more money to it um, if it holds 120 tomorrow. We just have to wait and see what ends up happening with this. So another one I'm in is Workhorse, guys, which did do well today, finally, right? Up 8%, up $1.33. We closed right under 1770, which is a big resistance. So I'd watch for a break out of there, maybe a gap fill up to 19 bucks. Then if that breaks, maybe back up into the 20s. And Workhorse is reporting earnings here on the 9th, which is in four days. That's probably on Monday. Uh, yeah, I think four days from now is Monday. So watch out for workhorse earnings uh, there. So let me know your thoughts. What are you guys doing? Let me know in the comments down below. And let's talk about some earnings reports now. We already talked about EA, which is not looking too great. EPS year over year, but it's okay. We'll see how that ends up going. I'll probably hop on the conference call later tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, see what's going on there. And we have Roku, R-O-K-U. Unlike EA, guys, this one is up a nice chunk after hours, up to 253 bucks. That's the high it hit. Now it's back down to about 200. Wow, it actually went to 250, down to 218. Now it's back up to 238. So this is very volatile. Let's see what they reported as I'm actually looking at these earnings live here, guys. So live news. Let's take a look and see if they uh, reported this. So nine cents they beat. Versus, wow, the 40 cents in the red. So nine cents is what they reported. The, the uh, estimates were negative 40 cents, so they crushed EPS. Revenue came in at 450 million versus 366 million. So a double beat there for Roku going absolutely bananas now. And this is one that it's getting more overbought. I mean, if we get some sort of pull down 
tomorrow, maybe next week, that could be a nice spot to get in. But if we end up running up to 250, I don't want to chase it, right? If that makes any sense. But hey, kudos to Roku. Congrats to anybody out there that's holding Roku. And let's take a look at what Square did. Again, guys, these are all live. Oh my goodness, look at that. Square's up to 186 here after hours. Oh my goodness, it was up to 190. So it closed at 175 up to 190. Now it actually went back down to the 180. So let's see what we're doing. I mean, 186, that that's looking pretty interesting here. And EPS came in at 34 cents versus 16 cents estimated. So a double up there versus the estimate. And sales came in at 3.03 billion versus 2.07 billion. What the heck? I mean, were these analysts, what were they drinking that night? I mean, geez, they, they, <laughs> Square just destroyed these earnings. What the heck? That's why it's up that much, guys. From 175 to 190, that's a 8% move after hours. That's pretty impressive. So at this point, like uh, Roku, I'm not going to chase Square. I mean, the time to get in, obviously, on hindsight was at 155 but like I said I'm not a big guy of uh, holding er earnings the day before um, so I wouldn't have done that anyway but at this point I'm not looking to, to chase it but hey if we settle 180s maybe a move back up to 190 that is very very possible and Peloton Peton let's take a look at what this one's doing here uh, did they report yes they did after hours they are down so they went up to 126 today they closed there oh, uh, earnings came out they hit 130 back down to 118 now they're chilling at about 121 let's see exactly what they ended up reporting so okay okay here we go q1 eps 20 cents versus 11 cents so they beat that double up there and estimate uh actually no wait sales came in at 757.9 million versus 747.95 million estimated so a double beat on p time this one's crushing it uh, after hours guys well actually it was it went up to 130 now it's going down but in terms of earnings the double beat that is pretty good so let's take a look at what guidance is going to be looking like um, I'll do some more research into that but overall Peloton has been hit and this is one that could do well let's say if we get another wave of lockdowns right which I mean with this earnings report we're actually breaking this downtrend on the four hour chart and that 50 SMA so this could be in play tomorrow on a, a momentum play so watch out for P time I'm definitely watching that tomorrow Uber let's take a look at what they did U-B-E-R Uber ended up did they not report yet uh, let's take a look here. Live news. Let's see if it came out. Okay, Uber, 60, uh, 62 cents in the red versus 65 cents in the red. So they beat EPS. Uh, revenue came in at $3.12 billion versus $3.2 billion. So they missed there on revenue, but the stock is still up. And we know that now they're able to operate in California. Their job or their uh, their uh uh, independent contractors. They don't have to be employees now. So that's actually a big win for uh, Uber in, in the California market and in general, right? So it looks like the stock guys, I mean, although it missed revenue, it doesn't care. I mean, the, the news came out yesterday. That's great. Uh, you know, Prop 22 here for Uber and Lyft. So I'll be watching this one, but I'm not chasing it, like I said, with some of these other ones because it seems like it already made its move. So I'll probably just be watching it at this point. And Alibaba is another one, B-A-B-A. -B -A. It ended up reporting this morning, and I actually didn't look at their earnings. Uh, let's take a look down here if we could see it. EPS 265 versus 211. Sales came in at $22.84 billion versus $23.17 billion so EPS beat but sales did not beat which is not good news um, I'd say for a big company like Alibaba that's like could you imagine if Amazon missed revenue I mean at this point Amazon doesn't care about profit I mean they're trying to reinvest and build the company from within uh, they don't really care about EPS too much they're just trying to uh grow as fast as possible, grow their revenues. So could you imagine, and, and kind of that's what Baba's doing as well, and could you imagine if Amazon missed revenue like that? That would not be good. So it makes sense that Alibaba's down about 3% on that miss. And Virgin Galactic here, guys, and by the way, this could be a dip buy uh, in terms of Alibaba. We have to see if it does recover here on the overall 
uh, uh, support on this four-hour chart. We'll be watching it there. And Virgin Galactic here, guys, they ended up reporting uh, today, and they're not doing much of EPS and revenue. But what we're looking at for Virgin Galactic is how much money they're burning. And that's with every company that is in, I don't want to say the idea phase, but that's in the beginning stages before they actually make a ton of money, sell, sell things and so forth. At this point, they lost $77 million in Q3 and their EPS, okay, they did have EPS, 34 cents in the red. So they lost 34 cents versus the 26 cents in the red. So they missed there on the estimate. 77 million is what they lost. And the stock's actually up after hours. It's up to 1960. It actually hit almost 20. It actually did hit $20. So that's interesting, guys. Watch out for Virgin Galactic here. It seems like it's found a nice base. It broke 19. Maybe we fill the gap up to $21 tomorrow. That is very, very possible. So let's see. We're about 25 minutes in. Let's talk about some other stocks very quickly before I do end off this video. So AMD is one that I'm interested in here. Um, it, it momentarily broke a big resistance today at about $83. We gapped up to about, uh, we ran up to about $84.50 in the pre-market. And that was looking bullish, but like many of these stocks, guys, AMD's a bit overheated. Our size a bit hot here on uh, the four-hour chart, the five-minute uh, five chart, although we are still holding the uptrend, so I'd be careful with it. But if we get a clear-cut break out of 83 tomorrow, we hold it, we might see a rally up to the mid-84s, and I think there is potential even from 83 up to 87 $88. So I'm watching AMD. Another one here is ZM. ZM ended up holding nicely uh, 460, 450. Now we're looking to break out of this downtrend uh, that we're seeing here and that 50 SMA on the four hour chart. So Zoom could easily explode out of this, especially if we get another solid green day like we got today. And honestly, guys, if we do get another lockdown, like I said earlier with Peloton, Zoom is in the the clear right this is a company that is likely to continue to do well same here with big tech right a lot of the big tech names um, are bound to do well in that scenario. So watch out for Zoom, AMD, SLV. We already talked about it. GLD, we didn't talk about that one. That is very similar to SLV as SLV is a ETF for silver. GLD is an ETF for gold. So gold is breaking out. This is breaking out of the channel. GLD is. We're about to go and test 185. Watch that for resistance. If it breaks, there could be more upside. Tesla is also breaking out of this wedge. We broke both moving averages. This is looking bullish. Today up 4%, up 17 bucks. And if we get another gap up, I mean, this could be running. Next big resistance is mid 400s. I'd say 450 to about 460. That is where we could see uh, Tesla be headed to. And talk about overbought, guys. Neo. Oh my goodness. Neo is up another 12% today up $4.60, and I've been calling for a pull down here since 32 bucks. You guys can see the arrow here um, from a couple of videos ago, and we haven't gotten it. This is unbelievable. At this point, I don't think NEO is worth chasing. I think it needs a healthy correction. I would like to see it back down in the low 30s. We probably won't get that, but I wouldn't chase it. And I'd be careful. I'd just be careful with this one if you're not already in it. Me, guys, I know it sounds crazy, but you guys have been watching my videos for a while. You know this. I've been in NEO since the 3 to $6 range. I had a small position at about $1,000 at first, added a little bit more, another $1,000. I think I built it to about $2,500, and I've let that thing ride all the way to where it is today. And like I was saying back in those videos, this is a speculative, it was a speculative position for me, which is why I only had a tiny amount of my portfolio, about 2,000, bucks. And it goes to show it can turn very quickly. It's gone from where I got in at three, four, five, six dollars all the way to $45. 
and I'm a, I'm a bull, but I'll be the first to tell you this needs to pull down. This needs to come down to $30. That's my honest opinion there. And Helion, Helion, however you want to call it, H-Y-L-M, is another one worth watching here, breaking out of the 50 SMA 4-hour chart. We also broke 22 bucks, held above it, old resistance, new support. That's good. Now we might fill up the 2580. That's my first target. And then after that, around 28 bucks. So this is looking like momentum is finally shifting upwards. That is a good sign. And keep Keep an eye on the MJ stocks. You know, if Biden wins, these will do well. And same with the Chinese stocks as well, as he's a lot more friendly on trade than Trump is when it comes to uh, uh, USA versus China. And you guys will agree with me there, of course. So Chinese companies might do well under Biden, Neo, Baba, Tencent, JD, all of these. Watch out for them. And that is pretty much it for the video. We wrapped it up in about 30 minutes. That's usually the goal, guys. If you all enjoyed it, hit the like button for me. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys want three free stocks, don't forget from Webull, valued up to $1,600. Use my link down below, deposit $100, and you get three free stocks. And I also get three free stocks since it is an affiliate link. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at StossurFest. And join the Discord chat. It's free. And all of those, again, are linked down below in the description box. So I'll catch you all next video. Stay safe out there. That's very important these days. Keep crushing the market. And again, thanks for watching.